Let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly? Coach Self, where did that first half start to turn where you started to get back into the big lead? Well, we finally made some shots. We had some good looks and our, missed a lot of in tight shots. And, of course, Durant, once again, was unbelievable. But I think just the law of averages started to prevail. DJ Augustine was out, and you told your team to turn up the heat without him on the floor. It paid off. How did you take advantage of that? Well, he's their primary handler. Whenever they want the ball in his hands 90% of the time, so we just tried to get after him pretty good. All right, thanks, Coach. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. Kansas, a 17-4 to run to end the first half. Right now, let's join Dave Repson, Rick Majerus, and Steve Lavin with the Cisco Halftime Report. Thank you, Ron. So an impressive comeback there by Kansas, which beat the Horns eight days ago in Lawrence. They're down by five at the break. Welcome in the Cisco Halftime Report. Dave Revson, Rick Majerus, and Steve Lavin. Thoughts on the first half, Coach? Well, the good news and bad news about Durant and his 22 points is this. His teammates have a tendency to stand around and watch. Durant has 22, Kansas has 28, Augustine has six. And, not, and when they stand around, it wouldn't be so bad, but then they forget to rebound, move without the ball, put themselves in, in a defensive transition period because they don't know where and when Durant's shooting. Yeah, clearly a remarkable offensive surge right out of the gate by Texas, but because of Augustine's foul trouble and then Kansas able to fight back, and uh, that in itself, the counterpunching Kansas showed was impressive to crawl back into this game, in particular when you think of the pressure of a single elimination game situation like this, obviously the championship at stake. Kansas, the quickest team man for man in the country, and we saw that in the comeback. The other thing at stake, of course, potentially for Kansas, the number one seed in the NCAA tournament when those brackets come out a little bit later, We'll see whether or not this game impacts it. The guys will tell you who they think their number one seeds are in a moment. Both these teams have a chance. Ohio State and Wisconsin playing for the Big Ten title. Ron Lewis down low for the Bucks. People forget about the Buckeye upperclassmen. Ron Lewis, Jamar Butler, Matt Tewilliger, Ivan Harris. They got a Big Ten ring from last year. Back-to-back, -back. we see the open court here. The best pure point guard in the country, Mike Conley, because of his quickness and his ability to improvise. Freshman puts the Buckeyes up 6-2, Coach. Unfortunately, sometimes they forget to go into Orton, too. By far the best big man in the country who is unselfish, has a passing presence, and would love to play in out ball if they look for him a little bit more. After Terwilliger hit, we see Ivan Harris here. So Ohio State on top 16-11 to right now over the Badgers. As you can see, Conley leading the way with five. Have not shot it particularly well. Wisconsin just 27% from the field. Ohio State 50%. They've split their two meetings earlier this year. Coming up, they stumbled a bit down the stretch, but Florida picking up some steam heading into the dance. We'll show you how they fared today against Arkansas next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Welcome back to the Cisco Halftime Report. Julian Wright, 10 points in the first half for the Jayhawks. Nifty little move right here under Kevin Durant. It's a five-point lead, though, for Texas at the break. Let's check out the SEC from earlier today. Joe Kim Noah in Florida taking out Arkansas Hogs, hoping to steal a bid, knock one of those at-large candidates out. But Noah and the Gators would hear nothing of it. Noah had 17. A little bit of a scare here for the Gators as Horford says Noah on the break and Florida celebrates as they are your SEC champs as Noah a good game was 17 Florida shot 53 percent they continue to shoot it very well that looked like Elton John's crocodile rock dancer at the end <laughs> it was better than Mark Madsen's uh, Laker celebration dance uh, just about anything would be Florida is your SEC champ as they win the tournament for the third straight year in the ACC Sydney low I think the jackets walking by itself at this point guy. <laughs> well NC State hung in there for as long as they could eventually wore down executing the back door pass there and at the end of the day, though, too much firepower. Rayshon Terry, the senior, the veteran, stepped up down the stretch. We see the close in and one and also hit a three-pointer later in the game. He had 13, all five starters and double figures for Carolina. Ben McCauley working hard down low. Wolfpack cut it to three. They made a great run in this game, but Carolina just too tough down the stretch. Terry hits that with the heel shot, 58%, and the dream is over for Sidney Lowe. Got a great tourney run, but it ends here. North Carolina takes it by nine. 
and a great debut for Sidney Lowe in his first year as the Wolfpack head coach got that program headed in the right direction. But this puts him into the NIT, and I think before this tournament they were not. This is going to be the best NIT in recent memory. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, North Carolina State, very impressive run down the stretch. We'll see how they fare. They get that NIT shot. Northwestern State, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. This is the battle for the Southland title, the automatic bid that goes along with it. Chris Daniels hits the hook. Northwestern State last year, of course, was a team that won a game in the tournament. Trey Gilder underneath for the jam. This is a one-point game right now, final minute over on ESPN2. All right, guys, uh, as we were talking about Kansas in the running for a number one seed, we're just a couple hours away from getting those brackets. Rick, what's your take? Who are the four number ones if you were picking? Well, I've got Ohio State, Kansas, UCLA, and then I've got Georgetown. I think Ohio State is the best player in Odin. We sometimes forget about Conley, who's going to break the all-time steals record at Ohio State. He has over 200 assists this season. The kid's unbelievable, but he plays in that big shadow of Odin. Kansas, if NASCAR is your game, Jayhawk is your, is, is your name because they got every athletic attribute that you can ascribe to a team is present in that group. UCLA has the best personnel, the most talented, most skilled at the wings and a follow and in ship. Then they've got that great point guard no one has really heard of in the rest of the country, but he's terrific. He is the best defense period in college ball. Collison, he extends the pickup point. And then you've got the long, tall, athletic Amatu and Mata at the forward spots who are just killer rebounders. Those are why I have those three. And Steve puts Georgetown in, and I second that motion. Yeah, no real surprises with my picks. I think Kansas needs to win today, or Florida may end up moving into the mix. And even Wisconsin, still a shot. If they were to win the Big Ten Conference Tournament here, they would have 30 wins on the season and a strong case for being a number one seed. So there is a little bit of movement still coming down the home stretch. I think UCLA, even though they stumbled down the stretch with the loss at Washington in their regular season finale, and obviously in the first round of the Pac-10 Conference Tournament to Cal, they still overall 10-1 and against the RPI top 50 and their body of work which the selection committee says is critical is strong uh, no, no one's gotten a one seed coach since uh 1991 after why not? losing their last two games sure. why Ohio not do it State again 91, 91 and this is a hell of a year why Ohio not 2007 we'll sounds see like a good year too we are just a couple hours from getting that bracket get yourself signed up espn.com men's tournament challenge presented by pontiac and state farm free to play more than three million entries last year on espn.com grand prize 10 grand Kevin Durant going to be talking about a lot more money than that in the near future. He's got 22 in the first half. It is the Longhorns by five. This halftime report is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. This halftime report is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. Want to update you on the game in the Southland between Northwestern State and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Tori Mitchell with the steal. And Texas A&M Corpus Christi goes up by four. This game over on ESPN2 right now. And that's Luke Rogers hitting the three for Northwestern State. So they get within one in the final second. Go check it out on ESPN2 79-78 as Texas A&M Corpus Christi tries to get into the NCAA tournament for the first time ever. We'll keep it here on ESPN all day. Sports Center, 6 Eastern. We reveal the brackets, analysis to help you fill out said bracket. Bracketology follows us at 5 and 2 hours at 7. So we've got you completely covered on the tournament. Brandon Rush, 11 points in the first half for the Jayhawks, including three right here. Kansas, nice run to get back in this one, down by five at the half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And in part by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. 
Welcome back to Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. It's the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship, the Texas Longhorns and the Kansas Jayhawks. And our score at halftime is the Longhorns 39 and the Jayhawks 34. Grant Frischella looking at the first half. We need to go back to the late moments of the first half. And just like in Lawrence, all of a sudden, the Jayhawks turned it 180 degrees. And a lot of that reason, Ron, was because D.J. Augustine picked up two fouls with four minutes to go. They only had two turnovers in the first 16 minutes of the ball game and three turnovers down the stretch. Talked about Augustine. Now watch this pass and how it's right on the money. Durant is in rhythm. He goes out of the game. A.J. Abrams, a scorer, not really a point guard. Look where this pass goes and takes Durant away from the rim. You see the pressure. That's a bad place to catch the ball, and then he steps on the end line. One of those three turnovers without Augustine. Well, let's take a look at our Guinness first half stats. Is underway here in the second half. Texas by five. On offense first, KU rush. Deals it off to Khan. Ball was partially blocked by James. And now let's take a look at the uh, Guinness first half stats. Rebounding Texas. That's a big advantage right there. 21-16. They were pounded on the boards up in Lawrence. Second chance points for Texas. 11-3 because of the hustle plays made by guys like Damian James and Craig Winder. One thing, one thing we know about Kansas, Ron, early in the half, early in the second half, they will go inside. Well, Bill Self has got a question about the yes. ball bouncing up, and uh, I assume on the possession. Well, Here's what happened. Sasha Khan went up for the dunk on the screen and roll. Let's see now. That ball hit the rim. That's going to be a reset. There it is. Very easy. Be the easiest decision Curtis Shaw has all season. In the corner, they get it back to Khan. Back out to right. Remember how good right is in the middle of the zone. Julian Wright works against Durant. That shot is way off the mark. On the floor, taken away by Collins. Be interesting to see if DJ Augustine maintains his aggressiveness. Whistle and a foul on the floor. No, they called it turning it over. And nobody had looked up to see the ball had not touched iron, so the shot clock was running down. Six turnovers against KU. And let's check in with Holly Rowe. I spoke with Rick Barnes at the half and asked him about that 22-point lead that was evaporating. He said, are you kidding? I'll take a half like that against Kansas any day. He said, actually, I told my guys in the locker room, you play another half like that, we'll win this game. Okay, Holly. <laughs> and you know what? The numbers, the numbers back him up. You don't see A.J. Abrams driving to the hole, getting in, in the tall timber very often. That was a sweet move with the left hand, Ron. Chalmers, the ball tipped by Durant. KU still has it. They give it back to Pond, tries to jam it, misses right. Goes back to Chalmers for three and can't get it. And boy, oh my, Pond went down hard as he and James were contesting for the same rebound. Pond came flying out of nowhere, made a great effort on the basketball, and they got tangled in midair. You're right, Ron. James has called for the foul, his first. Keep your eye on this. This ball bounces around, and they get tangled up. It's an unfortunate foul on Damian James because he was just playing the ball, but... It Put Khan at a disadvantage. Yesterday, watch this uh, scuffle on the floor, and he gets kicked in the face inadvertently by one of the K-State players. You see uh, a shiner coming on, and just now went down, and he went down right on his back. Wow. 
You don't want to make light of a guy coming down that hard, but as an ex-coach and seeing that happen often, usually he comes down on his tailbone and that padding you have down there. In the posterior. So the ball is going to stay with KU. 33 seconds on the shot clock. I'm going to be interested to see how aggressive DJ Augustine can be on both ends of the floor with those two fouls now. Texas goes zone. Skip pass. Leaves him open. He's there from Chalmers. Well, we mentioned he picks his spots. And they usually come in big situations. This will be a big situation to take over. James with the left hand, not there, gets his own rebound, goes back to Durant, and Augustine puts it on the floor, not there, and the tip back by James. What an effort by Damian James, Rick Barnes' blue collar guy. And Arthur is down at the other end of the floor. This was some drive by DJ Augustine. The shot fake lifted the defender. That's how hard Augustine, you can basically throw caution out the window here. A lot of contact, Augustine warded off. Arthur came hard. So no worries about Augustine staying aggressive. Russell Robinson on the spin move with a whistle and a foul inside. I think Scott Thornley says that it was Durant who picked up the foul. Well, Khan first, now Arthur. That's got to be something there now. That, that's got to be a foul somewhere. James just picked up his second foul. They called it on him. He now, we mentioned yesterday, officials need to be very consistent and blow that whistle often early so that there's a good rhythm to this ball game in the second half. Thirty-seven forty-three, make it forty-three thirty-eight. As Robinson gets that one, Durant taking it strong and a foul call against KU's right. At first glance, it looked like Wright was in guarding position. He can be moving now. See, that's a bad call. You are allowed to be moving sideways and obliquely. That means heading backwards. He was in legal guarding position. Texas caught a break. Third foul on right. Abrams, quick two-pointer, knocks it down. He has got such a great release. He's got nine points. Robinson at the other end, unlucky on the shot. Kevin Durant comes down with the rebound. And Texas will push it. The double on Augustine, but he got out of the trap quickly. You see Rush is guarding in the open the second half, Ron. And Wright is guarding Winder. Durant. Offensive foul, and Robinson stepped in front of me. That's the first one on Durant. And Rick Barnes just said, you know, could have been a reversal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, that was, a, that was a block. He was not established. So I guess tip for tat, everything That's evens exactly out. That's exactly right. Yep. Will you say, hey, they all balance out? Look at Durant, 22 points, 8 of 14, 7 rebounds. Well, yesterday he only got 11 touches in the second half. 27 possessions he was in the game. He just caused a turnover right there. The Abrams strong to the hoop. Kevin Durant's length and size is going to make him in time a as good a defender. Maybe not as good as he is offensively, Ron, but he is a great defensive rebounder with great anticipation. Third foul on Chalmers. And very quickly, Russell Robinson is coming off the bench. Now, the two guys right now for KU that have three fouls are two people that uh, Bill Self wants on the floor for the remainder of this ball game. But that's Wright and Chalmers. Once again, that ball doesn't hit the rim. He missed a free throw, A.J. Abrams, against Villanova in mid-January, and he missed another one 
late in the season at Oklahoma, but he's not missed since the end of December from the foul line. It's not hitting the rim. So 47-38 Texas, 16-50 left to play in our ball game. Will Kansas defend their title, or will Texas wrestle it away from them? In to the right with the spinning layup is Collins, a beautiful move in the trees, and he gets it to go. How many times have we seen Kansas bogged down this season where Collins' penetration was a key? Kevin Durant put up an air ball. Here's Wright on the run. Winder trying to take it away. Rush for three, not there. And James comes away with a rebound for Texas. Uh -oh. And he will jam it. Nope, actually, finger roll. That was a heck of a play because if he tried to jam it, I think Rush would have had the angle to get it. He went under Rush's hand. That's a good, smart play. He also just pointed at himself. He wants some relief. Ball almost stolen by Winder. They get it back to Collins. He has the ball partially blocked, and on the follow, they score. And James blocked that shot. Kansas picking up the loose change. This pace, it'll be interesting to see who it favors, Ron. Both teams average in the 80s. Augustine, a three. Not there. Right rebound. But the ball is thrown away to Durant, and he will take it to the hoop, and it was fouled on the way. It better not be against Wright. That would be four. It's going to be on Jackson. Sharon Collins with his dribble penetration becomes their instant offense. And then watch Damian James. This is a nipsy, dipsy do. Kansas trails by seven. So we're back in Oklahoma City. First time that this tournament has ever been staged in the state of Oklahoma. Texas and Kansas uh, tied up in a good one. Texas leading by seven, early going second half. Join ESPN later today for three shows dedicated to the men's NCAA field of 65. First ESPNU Bracketology at 5 Eastern, then at 6 Eastern, Sports Center breaks down the tournament brackets. And at 7 o'clock, Bracketology experts analyze the field. Who's in? Who's out? Is there a Cinderella in the group this time? Join us on ESPN. We'll let you know. Well, he's on the threshold of a record. You mean in the Big 12 championships? You mean another record? Another record, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's his mom in the white T-shirt on the right-hand side of your screen. Let's see how Kansas attacks now. They're going to run a lot of pick and roll versus this man-to-man. -man. Rush really flat on that shot, but he got the follow. Missed the finger roll, but he missed it because he was fouled. All right, we talk about bracketology, and uh, where do you have the guys in the Big 12? How many teams for starters? So I think five will get in, Ron, and, and these two teams will get in because of the strength at the top of the league. Kansas at 29-4. and four. I think they're a number one seed regardless of what happens today. This is a team that's played very good basketball. A&M, they're hovering between a two and a three. I'll give them a three. I think Texas has made the biggest jump this month. Don't be surprised if they're a four seed, but what really helps Texas Tech and Kansas State has been the strength of this league at the top. And we've been conservative in our process of saying how good this league is, but it's been very underrated. Ball is going to head back the other direction. It'll go to KU. Seventh turnover against the Longhorns. Ron Franklin along with uh, Holly Rowe and Fran Frischella coming to you from the Ford Center in Oklahoma City. It's the Phillips 66 Big 12 Basketball Championship. Robinson, the bounce of the right. Just let him go by. Well, he, he had no choice, Ron, because he's not quick enough. When you get a big guy as agile as right involved in the pick and roll, it's very hard for Ashley to be able to make a play on him. This, this is why Kansas is so good at pick and roll basketball, because of the mobility of Julian Wright. Now watch this. As he comes to the basket, there's no way actually he's going to be able to stay in front of him. That's why Wright is at his best attacking the basket. So the ball turned over the eighth turnover against the Longhorns. Taught against D.J. Augustine on the run. The ball goes down to make it 
51 to 47 for Rush on a great move toward the hoop. At the other end, James with a turnaround. Ball is tipped in the air, comes back to midcourt, and Augustine will have it. Abrams off the mark. Yep, but this happened yesterday. They stopped getting Durant the basketball in the second half. They counted the basket, Ron. Watch this. I'm not sure about this well, one Let's here. take a look at it. Got no, it's ball. coming down. Yeah, it was it's coming, coming down. down. It's a tough call. Scott Thornley got it right. We get the benefit of replay. 51 to 49. KU can tie it or take the lead on this trip right here. Remember yesterday in the second half, only 11 touches for Durant. Actually, the jam at home. And why? DJ Augustine's penetration. Collins over to Russell Robinson. inside right had to give it up because he had a hand right in his face from Damian James and that's the ninth turnover against Kansas and you know what's beginning to happen Rick Barnes has really become very silent on the sidelines mm -hmm. uh, particularly this season and I think sometimes maybe some other coaches might agree Rick is almost too passive and right now he's up on the officials yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to roar. I think sometimes coaches are really good at getting on the officials without the crowd knowing it. The foul on Rush. So you don't have to worry about Rick Barnes being uh, passive in a championship game. Second time that uh, Texas has had a huge lead on Kansas and it has disintegrated. They're going to call that foul on you sure right that's his fourth foul that's a big foul I thought it was Rush who was closest to him on the play I remember this at Lawrence eight days ago Kevin Durant sprained his ankle missed about four or five minutes of action early in that second half and really never was the same down the stretch of that game in fact it was Abrams and Augustine that kept Texas in that ball game so Wright goes to the bench. He's got 14 points. Second free throw on the way for Durant. And he's got it. And it makes it 55 to 49. See, this is a smart move. And the coaching staff told me this before the game. They feel better about playing zone without Julian Wright in the middle of it because how good a passer he is. Collins for three. Yes. But you better cover the shooters. Fifty-five, fifty-two, Texas. Rush has done a nice job on Durant. On the run, partially lost control of it. The <laughs> shot, he was fouled on the floor. Shot one of Cal. And let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, you're talking about possible fatigue for Texas earlier. And, you know, one thing to keep in mind, te Texas was in a dogfight with Baylor two days ago. And during that game, they had some full court pressure defense they were playing. Kevin went over to Rick Barnes and said, if you want me to keep playing this full court pressure, I'm not going to be able to finish the game. So that was two days ago in a tough game. They played yesterday and now a tough game today, guys. How are their legs feeling now? Well, you know, Holly, it's a championship game. And whether they feel very good in the legs or not, I think you're going to say we could rest tomorrow. Abrams in and out. And here comes Collins. He's going to force the issue. He always will do that as the ball is knocked out of bounds by Abrams. And Ron, you and I have talked about this many times. Forget today. How about the fatigue of playing on a Sunday championship game and possibly having to play Thursday somewhere? Exactly. So that's always the uh, undercurrent when you have a Sunday championship and you expend that kind of energy over three games. Rush for three. Too strong. The battle for it and the foul is going to go against Jackson of KU. So there's a timeout on the floor. 11.54 left in our ball game. Texas by three. 55-52.
There will be one first-time entrant in the tourney this year. Texas A&M Corpus Christi takes the Southland first season in the conference, and they win it, holding on to top Northwestern State, 81-78. All righty. Oh, that's, uh, that's a friend of all of ours, uh, Ronnie Arrow, who used to coach at San Jacinto Junior College down in the Houston area. Congratulations to him. Our situation, Texas by three. And as Durant breaks the huddle, you see 22 points in the first half, four in the second half. And Holly Rowe, let's check in with you. You had an ear in the huddle. Right now, Kevin Durant is tired. In fact, his coach, Rick Barnes, has noticed this. And in the huddle right now, in the timeout, he just said to him, hey, Kevin, let's have you slow down on offense right now. He drew up some plays. He's looking for more penetration from A.J. Abrams. They're going to give Durant a blow right here. Well, we've seen uh, Augustine take over games, Ron. He had 31 against Iowa State. Augustine with a bounce pass stolen by Chalmers. Chalmers was very aware of that baseline drive and drift. Collins with a huge screen from Collins. Couldn't get around him, but his biggest thing was shooting over Collins. That's right. And Collins is back. Off his back. One play ball game, Texas 55-54. Durant falling away, short on the shot, tipped up by James, not there, and here comes KU, Collins again. Ball is blocked by Durant, and it'll go back to Texas. An incredible play, what a block shot. Watch this, Ron, he gets poked right in the eye by Julian Wright inadvertently, and you see him hold it. But don't, uh, don't discount the great job Rush has done, done on Durant. Durant, jumper got it. <laughs> Seems like he doesn't have problems with size. That time elevating over the 6'11 con. 28 points for Durant, three-point Texas lead. About to go under 10 minutes to play in our championship game. Same two teams met last year in Dallas, and it was KU winning as Jackson put up a ball that barely drew iron. You see how ineffective Jackson is compared to right in the middle of that zone. Jackson's a banger. And in case you joined us late, the reason Wright is not in the ball game is because of four fouls. Kevin Durant too hard off the back iron. It's Rush who rebounds. And Rush has done a very good job. His quickness has bothered Durant. Timeout called by Bill Self. And Rush is now limping after he slipped on some perspiration. We'll check on that. Three-point lead Longhorns. We'll be right back. We are back at an exciting championship game. Texas leading by three over KU. And take us inside the play, friend. Well, it's the little things that are done by guys like Atchley and Winder. Watch this cross screen by Atchley now. He's going to set a nice legal screen right there. That gets the body on rush. That means Khan has to switch. Now, even though Khan has length, big guys haven't bothered Durant's shot, Ron, as much as the quickness of Brandon Rush. So good execution by Connor Atchley. That will not show up in the box score. First field goal for Durant in the second half. In fact, you got to go all the way back almost six minutes into the first half. The last time that he had a field goal. Texas stays in that zone. Collins and Rush are the sharpshooters. So is Chalmers. Chalmers dishes it off. Jackson lost the handle, and then he was fouled. See how the women's NCAA brackets line up on ESPN and ESPNU tomorrow night with NCAA women's selection special. First at 8 Eastern on ESPN. The 64 team field is revealed. 9 o'clock ESPNU. The field will be reviewed bracket by bracket. Who's in? Who's out? Who will be Cinderella this year? The NCAA women's selection special on ESPN and ESPNU. Middle Tennessee State, Ron. Remember how much we enjoyed watching Chrissy Gibbons last year? Third foul on Damian James for the Longhorns. Jackson swishes that one. One point ball game, 57-56, Texas. And 
this partisan house of KU backers on their feet in Oklahoma City. Durant gives it back to his teammate. James to Winder. See, they're face guarding Augustine right now. They're not letting him get the ball back. That's good. Winder on the floor takes it strong to the hoop, and he was fouled. Craig Winder looked at the shot clock. It showed about eight. Augustine was denied. Durant was on the other side of the floor. He put his head down, and he continues to earn that scholarship with his performance in this tournament. Jackson just picked up his third foul. The only senior on on this club. Holly Rowe, let's check with you quickly. Well, guys, Rick Barnes brought Craig Winder to the press conference two days ago and said, guys, if we didn't have him, we wouldn't have won these games. He actually said his reckless abandon he's playing with on the floor is giving energy to everyone. Last year, Barnes called him the best teammate in the locker room. He supports these guys and sets a great example, and he's been the difference for them in this tournament. Thanks, Holly. He really has been an energy guy. You're exactly right. Collins looks for Chalmers. Now here's Rush. Ball is blocked by Ashley, but taken down by Jackson. And Jackson just picked up an offensive foul on that one, and that will be foul number four on him. The reason that's critical is because Wright has four. He's sitting on the bench. Watch him run over Damian James, who continues to be Rick Barnes's anchor defensively. And Arthur Ron. I'm not sure he's 100% right. yet. Are you? They're getting him up right now, but I tell you, he gets up very gingerly. And he goes right back down. Sits so he, right. You're he right. Can't go. Under nine minutes to play. James the lob. Durant. They denied Durant. They thought he was going to pop out, so he just smartly back cut. 30 points for Kevin Durant. Rush in the corner. He got it. Rush having a big one. 17 points for him. And he had to shoot it with a little more arc because of Durant. Durant pulls up for the three. It's short. Jackson with the rebound. He's not able to escape off the dribble, so he had to take a tough shot. Inside to Jackson. Ashley on him. The ball not actually blocked. He couldn't get a full handle on it. Pawn with the ball. Throws it back to Jackson. And Chalmers is fouled on the way to the hoop. Sasha Khan got on the floor. He's been banged up over two days. And he made the play, which got them a chance to take this lead. Brand, this got like a heavyweight mount. These fouls are tough and hard. One point lead, Texas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Phillips 66. Next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 quality propane gasolines. And in part by Papa John's. Order your next pizza online at papajohns.com. So we are back at Oklahoma City. The championship game of the Big 12. Durant with 30. Rush with 17. It's a one-point Texas lead. 7.51 showing on the clock. And in just a moment, we're also going to give you a graphic on the foul trouble because both teams beginning to get very close with still a lot of playing time at the 7.51 mark. Foul trouble and fatigue playing three games in three days. You don't see the sharpness you might see during the season. Championship games traditionally are wars of attrition. Wright and Jackson with four apiece. Three for Chalmers, three for James, two for Winder and Augustine. Speaking of championship games, credit goes out to Sidney Lowe and NC State. Talk about war of attrition, playing four games in four days. And a great effort against North Carolina today. Well, I'll tell you. I looked up there and it was a double figures up to about 16 points and, and uh, NC State just kept on coming. Sydney had that red jacket glowing. He had it going. And <laughs> I said glowing. Glowing. <laughs> right, still on the bench. Arthur still on the bench. 
right with four fouls and Arthur with an injury. And Fran, the, the question is, when do you bring them back? You try to milk this to get it under five minutes. This is the first lead by KU since they led it four to two back in the first half. Well, Brandon Rush has really made Kevin Durant work for good shots in the second half. Durant on the run, puts on the brakes. Chalmers almost takes it away from him. You got the double whammy, Ron, of Rush on Durant, and then Chalmers' quickness with his hands. Shot clock at 13. The pass, Durant was going the other direction. They battle for it, and the ball is thrown back to KU. On the wing, Rush, far three, missed it. But Collins is there to pick it up off the floor, and a foul is called on Texas. That's going to be on Winder. Brandon Rush once again on the defensive end made it tough to catch. He knocked it loose. Three on Winder now. Boy, Durant had started in, and the pass came very high and out. Well, even the Condor couldn't catch that one, Ron. That was a little bit over his head. Collins makes it a two-point KU lead. Brandon Rush, Ron, who came to Kansas with a reputation of maybe being a selfish player. You don't know how that got started, but he's been anything but that in his career. Passive offensively to a fault, but what a defensive player and what an all-around player he's become for Bill Self. You remember two straight games, he changed what could have been game-winning shots. Iowa State in overtime, Missouri at home. Him after those two ball games, which would he rather have? High score or the big defensive play? And he said the big defensive play. Says certainly. A, yep, says a lot about him. Three-pointer, Abrams can't get it. Rush on the rebound. Right now, Rush is taking this ball game over for the Jayhawks. Both of his brothers were prolific scorers in high school and college. Many people thought he'd be the same, but he's a very good all-around player. Collins, little too hard, brought down by James. Kansas by three. As long as Rush is doing a good job on Durant, let's watch Augustine try to take over on the offensive got end. Got a mismatch here. Rush got in the switch. Durant being guarded by Collins. Great defense by Rush. Ten seconds on the shot clock. James started to drive. Did not. Five seconds down to four. Lost the ball out of control. And Texas loses the possession just by not being organized that time. And Brandon Rush switched on to Augustine. Augustine could not do anything with him. Chalmers on the run. Offensive foul is called. How about Augustine not getting it done on the offensive end, but stuck his body in there. Four fouls on Chalmers. Very close bang bang play. I think, they, I think he got it right. So the ninth team foul against the Jayhawks. And of course, Texas has committed seven. So both with a one and one, one more, uh, and it'll be the double bonus for Texas. Augustine, 82% shooter, Ron, but a little bit of fatigue. Wright prepares to check back into the lineup for the Kansas Jayhawks. Jackson will go to the bench, and a good hand for him. Uh, we mentioned he is coming back home to play this uh, tournament from the Oklahoma City area. One of those guys when you have a team of All-Americans that really does the behind-the-scenes work. Augustine, one of a couple of Longhorns that you don't want to foul, whether it's early or late in the half. Swish them both. Chalmers goes to the bench with the four fouls. Kansas late in games. They get away from the post-up game, and they go more to the dribble-drive game. Rush couldn't get the shot to go. He was fouled. And that's Abrams who will pick up the foul. 
and it's the first one on him. But it is the eighth team foul against Texas. Remember, Ron, this guy was first team all Big 12 as a freshman. Got them both. Five point Kansas lead. We have just gone under six minutes to play in our championship game. Now Brandon Rush said in the paper he wanted the challenge of guarding Kevin Durant. Durant takes it by the ball partially blocked. Got his own follow, missed, and then James will score it. How about guys like James and Darnell Jackson, Ashley Winder? They've been big in this game. See, they're going to try to utilize some pick and roll. Rush, the screen out high from Khan, uses his body off balance with the shot. Blocked inside by Durant, and a foul is called on KU. And Winder came up with another rebound. Penetration was good. James continues to challenge shots. How about Durant with the block and then Winder picking it up? Russell Robinson uh, was called for the foul. He's second. Now, there are some tired players on that floor right now, but nobody, nobody is going to say that they don't have enough energy for five minutes and eight <laughs> seconds to give it their all because that's how much time is left in this year's championship game. Hey, the way this league has gone this season, Ron, tighten your seatbelt. We may have a couple more overtimes. <laughs> 67 65 Kansas. We don't have to catch a flame for a while. That's the good news. I'll watch a little more hoops. Right. Not there. Todd gathers the rebound and gets it back to Rush. Kansas staying in that 2 3 zone. And now Wright's back in. Collins says, I'll take it if nobody. Oh the rim, reversed it and scored. What an effort. 18 points by Collins. Small guys know how to use the rim because that's how they're able to get the shot off against shot blockers. Here's the trap on Augustine and the jump ball is called. Possession error says it'll stay with Texas. Watch this, Ron. We've seen good players do this all season. Collins gets by the basket. He uses the rim to protect his shot from James, who is laying for the block. Keep your eye on this. Great move. 30-second timeout is called. 4.18 left to go in the ball game. With that Collins hoop, it is a four-point Kansas lead. Well, Texas against Kansas, March the 12th, 2006. This was in Dallas at the American Airlines Center. This was a young basketball team at the time last year. Chalmers, Rush, Julian Wright. They had come off a whooping in Austin and turned the tables in Dallas just a couple weeks later. Won it by 12 after losing by, what, 20 points down in Austin. You see the scoring by halves. Texas led it by five at halftime, and KU was outscored the Longhorns by nine points here in the second half. Texas against Kansas for the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship from the Ford Center in Oklahoma City. Ron Franklin, Fran Freshella, and Holly Rowe, glad to have you along. Four minutes and 18 seconds left in this one. And it is far from over. Let's see how Rick Barnes can get Kevin Durant the ball. Or does D.J. Augustine be the go-to guy? There's the switch again. James. Khan got the block. He got the foul. And Collins will pick up the foul. Great look by Augustine. And a really good block shot by Sasha Khan. Showed the double bonus in effect. Collins with his second foul. James, first one on the way, and he got it. 
The reason that's so important, James only shoots 61%. Take away Durant, Abrams, and Augustine. This is a mediocre foul shooting club. Second with way too hard. Rush comes away with it. So it's a three-point margin, Kansas. Ron, you remember it. Collins did not score in 52 minutes in the last two games of the regular season. Did get eight points in his last outing against K-State. Chalmers dishes it off. Rush in the corner. In and out. Not there. And Durant is called for a push. So let's take a timeout. Kansas 69, Texas 66, as Collins, a freshman for KU, is taking it away. I slain the dragon! We come from our reward! Well done! This is for you. This is all I get? Terms and conditions state that you must slay a minimum four dragons before cash is earned. Tail must also be provided to prove that it is a dragon, not just a large lizard. Is this how your cash rewards card treats you? Introducing no hassle cash rewards. Earn cash on every purchase everywhere, plus a 25% annual bonus. Oh, you've qualified to marry my daughter. What's in your wallet? The wait, now a matter of minutes, but the first episode of Bracketology coming up. Hubert, still plenty of number one seeds to talk about in Bubble Team. Well, no debate about North Carolina Florida. Impressive wins today. And what went on today, we'll find out if that's changed the number one seeds. All you major conference guys, I'm going to tell you about the mid-majors that have a chance to win first and second round games. I'll try to slip Jay some big conference Kool-Aid <laughs> before the first episode of Bracketology. See you in a bit, Ron. Okay, Reese, thanks so much. Our situation, three-point lead, Kansas with 338 left in the ball game. And Rush, what an afternoon. 18 points for him, and uh, he had five at halftime, 13 in the second half. An incredible defense on Kevin Durant in the second half as well. Shekelman on the way, and Wright got that one as well. Rush stays on Durant. Largest lead of the afternoon by Kansas, 71-66. See, Wright gets to guard Winder, which means he can be the center fielder on defense. Winder not really an offensive threat. See, he's double-teaming Durant from Winder. Augustine, not there. The ball tipped up by Durant, and he gets the follow. Ron, that play was frozen in time. He was able to catch that ball in the air, and he just softly knocked it in. Collins strong to the hoop. Ball got tipped. Came down into the hands of Durant, who, by the way, with the nine rebounds, has set a new Texas single-season rebounding record. One held by LaSalle Thompson, 1980 to 1981. Not a bad rebounder himself out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And remember how important Augustine is to this offense. Durant goes against Rush again. Gets him to jump. Hits the jumper and a chance for a three-point play. Sasha Khan did not stay with the principle of verticality. Came down on Durant's hand. But watch this play, Ron. He's almost frozen in time as he catches this ball. And with the long oh. arms, Durant does not go over the back. Then the blocked shot. His defense, we've said it all year because we've seen him. Watch, watch Khan just come right down on his hand and Durant with the concentration to make the shot. I laugh. That's, a, that's the second tie of the ball game. I laugh at people who haven't seen Kevin Durant say he, he's not a good defensive player. 34 points for Durant, stolen by Abrams. And Chalmers can't do anything with it. But followed by Winder. Chalmers playing with four fouls. And you almost wonder if, if Abrams missed the shot on purpose because he knew Winder was coming. Now he got hit pretty hard, but watch the steal. Jump the passing lane. 
And I think he just lost it. But there's Winder, the guy that continues to earn the meal money, the scholarship, the room and board, and some free sneakers as well. So Texas goes back on top by two. The Longhorns huddle right left of uh, midcourt. 73-71 right now, 2.14 left to play. Now Russell Springman, one of Rick Barnes' assistants from the Maryland area, recruited Winder two years ago out of a junior college, Cecil Community College, hadn't played much, but he's been brilliant in this tournament, the only senior for Rick Barnes. Chalmers, pass too hard, can he hold on? Jackson saves it, it hit the rim. Chalmers gets it, and in the possibility of a three-point play. <laughs> That's what you call luck, good or bad. That time it went with Kansas. You think? Oh, <laughs> scramble. Watch this ball. It hits the rim. I mean, that thing was headed up. Bill Self would have been the closest guy to catch it. And Chalmers is right there to score. Damian James has just picked up his fourth foul for Texas. We said at the top of this broadcast, he picks his spots. Chalmers completes the three-point play. So KU goes back on top by one. Here we go again. <laughs> Durant. Misses the shot, fouled by Rush. That was a very smart play by Kevin Durant. He knew that Julian Wright, if he came to the middle, would provide double-team help. So he turned away from the pressure on the baseline and picked up the foul. By the way, we've just been handed a note <laughs> that uh, the 35 points for Durant is uh, the highest scored in tournament history. Marcus Pfizer is at 38. So it's the second highest total, 35 points. Pfizer, number one at 38. And Durant rattles that one home. Now the question all season for Kansas is who is your go-to guy? Right now, they have four of them on the floor, including the freshman. Collins pulls up with the jumper. Not there. Ball tipped over to Durant. Taken away by Wright. And now Augustine has it. Augustine needs to settle here. He's going to take it right around, give it up to James. And Rick Burns yeah, is saying, yeah. hey, let's run a play. Same play, they're going to cross screen. Abrams for three, got it. Chalmers gambled and came up empty. And A.J. Abrams, the veteran, only a sophomore, made him pay. You see Chalmers overrun the ball. Abrams looks back, and you don't give this guy that much room. One of the best and underrated shooters in the country. Abrams with 14 points. So the reset, Texas leads it by four. Timeouts, Longhorns have three, Kansas one. Both double bonus possession error would go to the Jayhawks. And late in the year, Ron, Rick, uh, Bill Self has utilized Sharon Collins to penetrate and kick and make a play for some of his talented teammates. Coming up next on ESPN, ESPNU Bracketology, presented by Staples. You know, Collins today looks more like the young man we saw through the late part of January and into February, where he was simply unstoppable and just continued to force action, causing teams to wind up in positions they didn't want to be in. That's exactly right, Ron. He's the one player they have that is what we call a breakdown player. You have to guard him with two defenders to keep him out of the lane. Under a minute to play. Chalmers 
spins. Abrams on him. Shot is off the mark. Wright tries to save it, but it was touched last by Texas. <laughs> Damian, that's Damian James who's down there. He had a piece of that basketball. That would have been a heck of a rebound. 21 seconds on the shot clock for the Jayhawks. These teams will watch the selection show here in Oklahoma City, head back tonight, and if one of them plays on Thursday, that is a quick turnaround. Chalmers to inbound it, and Durant is guarding him on the baseline. Going to have to lob it, and he gets it to right. Now Collins looks up at the scoreboard. 15 seconds on the shot clock, puts up a 12-footer, knocks it down. Bill Self calls the timeout. Two-point Texas lead, 40.1 seconds remaining. He loves having the ball in his hands. He's grown into that role. He hasn't had to be the go-to player. Fellow freshman D.J. Augustin has been for Rick Barnes, but down the stretch of the season, Ron, as you said, Bill Self has enormous confidence in the young man from Crane High School in Chicago. Well, all year long, we have talked about the Big 12 and uh, how many great games have we been able to see. And I mean, it has gone with matchups from the north, the south, and against each other. This championship game, to me, just really speaks volumes as to how, how well this conference has played this year. I totally agree, Ron. Six teams with over 20 wins. And if you like what Kansas and Texas A&M have done all season, then you have to like what Texas, Texas Tech, and uh, Kansas State have done. This has been an underrated conference. We haven't blown its horn very much when everybody says what the best conference in the country is, but they played great basketball this year in this league. Kevin Durant in the second half, he got 22 at halftime and uh, struggled, but he now has 25 points, <laughs> or 15 points, I should say, in the second half of play. Yeah, he's struggling. You still have 37, and he has been really guarded well by Julian Wright and Brandon Rush. With an unbelievable performance. Here, and you see he gets a, a putback, gets the rebound, and in the putback. With 40, Show a double-double again today. Ron, with 40 seconds on the clock, you really can't afford it for your Bill Self to let Texas run the clock down. They're going to press, and they're going to foul. Now, here's the dilemma. You've got three great foul shooters in Augustine, Durant, and Abrams. If James or Winder could catch this ball, it would be a great break for Bill Self. Here comes the play, and it comes into James. They bounce it right back to Augustine, and now to Durant. See, they're trying to figure out who to foul. They didn't get it. And they don't want to foul this guy. Durant. Plenty of time oh. on the shot clock. And Rick Barnes looked at Kevin Durant and said exactly what we were talking about. Not Craig. There's the numbers, but remember this. Winder came in today, Ron, 11 of 13. You say, why not? Why, why foul him? Because he hasn't shot a lot of free throws this year. Two or four today, and you're right, hasn't played that much, so he hasn't had the opportunity. First one on the way, and he missed it. But that's interesting that we would read his lips at the same time, not Craig. It is not yes. that you're anti-winder. You just, <laughs> you know that Kansas will have all five people foul him. Exactly. You need to play the percentages. Winder, second one on the way, and he got that one. Three-point lead. Texas calls a timeout. So KU with 21.7 seconds on the clock. That's what we have left in regulation. Tell me what Bill Self is uh, is talking about. Take um, us to the chalkboard. This has been their bread and butter all year in late games, particularly as Collins has stepped up big. He has the ball here, a screener here, a postman here, shooters in the corners. If you can come off the screen and get to the rim and get a quick two, great. But if the defense collapses, kick it out for the open three. They don't necessarily need a three, Ron but they'll take a three if it comes within the flow of the offense. Both teams, double bonus. Timeout's not really a factor right now, although KU has just, though that was Texas who took the timeout, so Texas still has a couple left. 
but they lead it by three points, 79-76, and 21.7 seconds on the clock. And Ashley comes into the lineup to give him a little bit more height. Darnell Jackson is into the ball game for KU. Interesting here, Texas is showing zone, but let's see if they switch the man and they... Collins, stayed zone. Chalmers, par three. Got it! Augustine. And Texas calls a timeout with 13.8 seconds left. A, a little surprise, Texas went zone. Kansas set a ball screen which freed Chalmers. Watch this now. They settle back into the zone. There's the switch and then the screen. And Abrams is late. Chalmers, of course. Johnny on the spot. Can't draw it up any better than that if you're Bill Self. A little surprise that Texas went zone. Now, let's talk about what Rick Barnes uh, might be planning over there in the huddle. Do you just, is it an automatic? You go to 35? Not necessarily, Ron, because if you think back to the LSU game when DJ Augustine had 25 points, LSU made it very tough for Durant to get the ball, and Augustine's penetration was really what won that game. So Rick Barnes has a couple of options. It's harder to defend a man with the ball than a man who doesn't have it. So Augustine might wind up being the guy that makes this play. Chalmers, the MVP of last year's game. He just hit the three to tie it. Will he be this year? Clock is down. They go to Durant. Spins around. The jump shot. Too hard. Taken away by Russ. And the shot no good. The first overtime in Big 12 championship game history. They went with, they went with their bread and butter cross screen for Durant, where he catches it away from the basket. It's a it's a, a post up from 15 feet. You see, he turns away from right, gets a good look, and that's all you can ask. So, of all the great games that we have had this year, it's like another day at the office in the Big 12 Conference. You know what? So, here we go. Rush with the steal. It is Kansas in overtime. What a win! He saved the basketball. Oh, oh no! Keep your eye on Bogan. He's dominated the game. 6.2 seconds left. He got it! And oh. see, Law. We're heading to overtime. He did it again. No, he did it. Durant. The national player of the year. Boy, this is fun. So <laughs> it kind of takes your breath away when you when you see all of those great contests that we did have this year. Talk about strategy in overtime. Uh, both teams are fatigued, but KU has a lot more depth than does Texas. They do. Survival now. It's five minutes, really. You stay, you dance with who brung you, Ron, as they say, in this part of the country. Obviously, Durant and Augustine, A.J. Abrams for Texas, and then same thing, Bill Self has a number of offensive weapons as well. But Brandon Rush has really made uh, Durant work for his baskets in the second half. Well, this is going to be the fifth overtime game for Texas this year. They are 2-2. Two and two. KU is 2-0. and oh. And in fact, the first time we saw KU this year was on the road at Ames, Iowa, and the Cyclones took them to overtime, and it was Rush who took that one over offensively and defensively, and that's how they got the win. Absolutely right. And how about this? This is still two of the youngest teams in the country. 
Show will be Kahn jumping it up against Durant. Five minutes on the clock and tied at 79 at the end of regulation. We go to overtime. Okay, Texas ball. Justin Mason, Ron, must be really aggravated with the ankle and knee injuries because of Winder getting all these minutes. Winder over to Abrams. See, I think Augustine can break this defense down. Augustine dishes it off to James, and he missed the easy layup. He'll have an opportunity for two shots. You're not going to forget Kevin Durant, but it's much easier against a set defense for a man with the ball to break you down than to try to get it to Durant, who's being defended the way he is by Rush. You know, when you go back to the end of regulation, it, it shows how well coached KU was. They, they had an opportunity as that first free throw is missed. They had an opportunity to foul Augustine, but they didn't want to. They certainly didn't want to foul Abrams. And the minute, I mean the minute, that Winder touched the basketball, they were all over him. He only made one, the difference in the ball game. A great point. Missed them both. Remember, Kansas is not a particularly good free throw shooting team as well. Then you factor in fatigue. Collins along the baseline, back to Kahn. Chalmers, right is open just to the left of the free throw line, and he cans it. That's his range, Julian Wright, 15 feet and in. 18 points for Wright. And I'm going to remind you, he played the late stages of regulation and now overtime with four fouls. Durant, the turnaround, that's way too hard. Winder gets the rebound. Three-pointer on the way, and that one is short, but he oh. was fouled. And that is five <laughs> fouls, I believe, on Chalmers. That is a great break for Rick Barnes. Chalmers... A clutch player for Bill Self. And the man that he fouled is the guy that Fran has talked about uh, all tournament long about being Mr. Automatic. Has missed two free throws since December 28th. So Chalmers, 17 points. MVP of last year's tournament. And, you know, he's still a hero in this one right here because he is the one who sent it to overtime with burying that three-point shot. But here's the great thing about Kansas. We've said this many times. There's no one go-to guy. They're still left with Wright, Collins, and Rush out there as well as the glue guys, Robinson and Kahn. I don't care who wins this game. <laughs> this coaching staff for KU has got to feel even better about today's game for one reason. Number four, Collins, all of a sudden has put the cape back on. Yes, he has. He's doing what he was doing <laughs> prior to that, causing people a lot of headache. He missed. Abrams missed. <laughs> wow. Check him when he got it. Always wonder why you slap the shooting hand of a guy at the foul line. <laughs> I don't get it. Kick the foot of a kicker, would yeah. you? <laughs> Third one on the way. Okay. He got it. He made two of three. He's in a slump. Third miss since January 1st. So still tied. 81 apiece. 344 left in our first overtime. Texas switches back to man, which means we'll see pick and roll. Rush a little too short, rebounded by James. That's what we call a traffic rebound by Damian James. And he's got a lot of them in this tournament. He's got 12 rebounds in this ball game today. None of them easy, Ron, against this Kansas front line. This match. Durant couldn't get it. James gets it right back to Abrams. And uh, James got hit in the <laughs> ear. It's another traffic rebound. 
be standing next to a guy that has, <laughs> I guarantee you, no worries for him on what Sasha's gone through the That's last right. couple of days. Abrams, quick release. That's short. Taken down by Collins of KU. Out on the wing, Russell Robinson. Rush just inside the three-point line. Can't get it. James with another rebound and lost it out of bounds. You wonder why Russ wouldn't just shoot that shot. And that's what Bill Self is telling him. Watch him hesitate, Ron. He had the, he had the open three, and then he took the ball into the defense. And there Dribbled you see. Dribbled it off his foot. Yep. And you just wonder again how much fatigue plays a factor in an overtime game after three days of intense play. This is right. Takes it to the hoop. It is blocked by Durant. You know, and what Bill Self was saying to Rush, six blocks by Durant, we're told, is he told him a couple of games ago, and that is, when you've got the ball, you're my man. I want you shooting. Don't worry about me admonishing you for that. You hurt the team when you pass up open shots. That's right. If your role is to score. People think of a role player as a guy that doesn't shoot. No, you do what you do best. Russell Robinson got it. Rattled it home. Russell Robinson is not nearly the player of Brandon Rush, but his toughness is evident right there. That's only his third point of the ball game, but how huge was that one? As Abrams is able to bring that pass down that was very high. Assistant coaches at Kansas have told us often Russell Robinson is good because he thinks he's good. James right after him. Strong to the hoop. Ball in the air. Taken away by Russell Robinson. KU will push it up. They lead by two. We're in the first overtime. Regulation ended at 79 apiece. Right. And a foul against Durant on the baseline. Third one on Kevin Durant. Texas took a shot that previous possession. I don't think Kevin Durant touched it. I'm not sure Rick Barnes wanted Damian James going one on one. So the crowd is <laughs> just a, a bit of a murmur. There's no real cheer right now as Wright shoots it and misses the first one. Only a 62% foul shooter, and Kansas has struggled over the last part of the season from the foul line. And that could bode poorly for them in the NCAA tournament. Shekelman on the way, got that one. Three-point margin by the Kansas Jayhawks, the number one seed in this year's tournament. I still like Augustine's dribble penetration, but there's the switch now. Kansas is switching all screens. Augustine. Ashley gets the screen. Shot clock is about to hit 10. Augustine, the bouncer to Durant. Durant, Augustine, blocked by Rush, taken away by Collins. The best shot blocking guard in the country. We've said it all year. You think back to early in the season, Ron, you mentioned that shot Matt Lawrence took from Missouri. What a job defensively Rush has done today. Jackson comes out to screen at Augustine. Collins gets it to a teammate, to Robinson. 84-81 in overtime. Kansas on top. Points right here would be devastating to the University of Texas. Collins pulls up. Not there. Ashley comes away with the rebound. Brandon Rush, 6'6", doesn't mind defending. Watch the length here. He challenges the shot. Augustine thought he had space, but Rush comes up with the big play. Jayhawk bench has seen that before from Brandon Rush. So let's go back to the studio and Dave reps and Dave. Thank you, Ron. I want to tell you how the Big Ten Championship came out. Ohio State, a winner over Wisconsin by 17. David Lighty finishing here for the Buckeyes, so they seem destined for a number one seed when those brackets come out. Uh, less than a half an hour now, Steve. What do you think? Uh, who are your number one seats? Well, I think Ohio State 
Kansas and North Carolina have solidified their situations. The question now would be a Florida, a UCLA, a Georgetown, those three teams in the mix, and the selection committee has their hands full, and at this late stage, there's not a lot of room, not a lot of time, obviously, to decide. Yeah, the issue, of course, is Florida and Georgetown both finished on a very positive note. Obviously, UCLA finishing on a negative note, losing two in a row. We will know soon enough. Let's get it back to Ron and Fran. Guys? Okay, gentlemen, thanks so much. Our situation, 22.4 seconds left. And uh, Kansas with a lead of three points. Let's take a look at highlights of Kevin Durant in this ball game today. 37 points, Ron, but he has had to earn every one of them. I guarantee you in the post-game press conference, they'll be talking about the great job Kansas has done on him, and he still managed to have a big game. Julian Wright, Brandon Rush, Sasha Khan, everybody's had a piece of this guy. He's a marked man, but he's still come up big and kept Texas in this championship game. Well, listen to this resume on today's action. 37 points for him, 10 rebounds, 6 blocks, and 2 steals. And again, the point is made for people who think that he is only an offensive player. Those last two numbers, or last three I gave you, 10 rebounds, 6 blocks, and 2 steals, tells you that he is at work at both ends of the floor. Big 12 player of the year, Big 12 freshman of the year, all Big 12 defense, and soon to be national player of the year. It's the third time that he has hit 37 points this year. Crowd coming to life. Just over 22 seconds left, and here come the Longhorns. Can they send it to a second overtime? Augustine, it is blocked by Jackson, and he was able to hold on to it, and he was fouled. 13.2 seconds left. The incredible thing about this block is Darnell Jackson, rather than swatting it out of bounds as Texas goes for the quick two, watch him block it softly to keep it in play, and he gets his own block shot. Now, if you remember a guy named Bill Russell from the Boston Celtics in the 60s, that was what he did. Instead of being a hero and knocking it out of bounds, he blocked it to himself. Four-point ball game. Rick Barnes looks on. It's going to be a difficult situation unless he comes up with a, a miracle play. Down by four and now down by five. Augustine rushes it up. Abrams for three. Got it. Oh. Timeout ball. And it's a two-point ball game. Great execution. This is why you practice special situations in practice. This was a ball screen with a dribble handoff. Watch Ashley and then the handoff to create space for Abrams. That's great coaching right there. There's the screen, the handoff, and room for Abrams. So 8.3 seconds. It's a two-point ball game. Help me out on the play here because I know, I think I know what Bill Self wants to do. Obviously, you got to get it to your highest percentage free throw shooter to handle it. You do, and remember this, Ron, against Baylor, Texas was down in the second half, and they utilized a full-court press, something you don't see much from them, a diamond press. That's what they'll do here, and they'll try to steal it quickly, and if they don't steal it, they must foul quickly, and they can't worry about who Kansas's best shooters are right now. They don't have that luxury because of time. Okay, so let's see what happens. 8.3 seconds. There's the horn, the first horn. And can the Longhorns, can they get a steal? Or will they have to foul? And if they do, who would they foul? Brandon, it was interesting to note that the distant shot we had of KU on a couple of really important plays down here, particularly the block and the steal, those kids are so tired or either hurt <laughs> over there that nobody jumped to their feet. They got up very deliberately. Well, we're, Look at Kevin Durant's mom yeah. as uh, she discusses the possibilities. We're in the 16th round of a 15-round heavyweight <laughs> fight. Man. And it's been that way a number of times this year in this league. Brandon Rush. What an outstanding ball game for him. 19 points. Right. How about the job he's done? 19 points for him and playing with four fouls. 
And how about Jackson, who has come back home to play and has really played an important part. Russell Robinson is going to be fouled with 5.3 seconds showing on the clock. Now Robinson only 45, excuse me, 65 percent, 66 on the season. But young man from Rice High School in New York City, even before he arrived at Kansas, has played in some very big games. So if there's a miss, they must push it up the floor. Russell Robinson bends the knees on the way. He got it. Bill Salmon calls a timeout. No surprise. Russell Robinson, the glue to this team. He only averages six points a game. But when you grow up in Manhattan and you played at the Rucker Park in the Kingdome and in the Catholic League in New York, you've got ice water in your veins. Take a look at Brandon Rush and the job that he has done for the Jayhawks today. Well, he's done it on both ends, Ron. We've seen this kind of play from him all year. Defensively, he's one of the more underrated defenders in the country. He's also a guy that can step up big for, for Bill Self and provide some offense. That's a big one over Durant late in the second half. This guy plays hard and doesn't get the credit. Some people think of him as a pretty boy. Far from that. Here are his numbers today again. 19 points, four of those three-pointers. Seven rebounds, three blocks, and two assists. Texas has got 5.3 seconds to work with, and they trail by four points. If you're Kansas, you just don't foul right here. And if they get to the three-point line, don't go for head fakes. Ashley with the baseball pass. Durant a mile high. It hit the top. It is Kansas basketball with two seconds left. And that was a smart play by Rick Barnes because he saved time by getting a shot down the floor. Julian Wright, game is over. Overtime. Kansas wins back-to-back -back Big 12 championships. Kevin Durant shaking hands across the way. 37 points for the young man. Bill Self, very happy young man himself. And let's go down to Holly Rowe, who was with that smiling Bill Self. Well, Coach just said, what a game. I have to agree. You guys were down 22 in the first half. How did this team do it? Uh, they're tough. They're tough. And, uh, you know, we missed a lot of bunnies early, but we came back. And we had guys make tough plays. I thought Texas was fabulous. Uh, they got a great team. And, and, of course, Durant's off the charts. But, but uh, we just hung in there. We played out of foul trouble. It's a great, tough win. You told Brandon Rush a few days ago that your best players have to be the ones to step up. He did that today. How did he do it? Well, he was just more aggressive. You know, I, he had a great game. He did a great job on Kevin, uh, majority of the second half. Uh, and he had some open looks that he normally locks, knocks down. But I thought everybody stepped up. I thought Sharon was great. Brandon was great. How about Mario's plays late? And, and uh, Julian came in out of foul trouble and played well also. Coach Brackett's just about to be released. What do you expect? Uh, I think we're at one seed. All right. Well, congratulations on a Big 12 championship. We'll see you later. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Holly, thanks so much. And again, congratulations to Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks as they win in overtime over Texas in the championship game, 88 to 84. Up next at ESPN, ESPNU Bracketology presented by Staples. For more on this game, tune into ESPN News for a post-game extra.
I'm Ron Franklin for Fran Frischella and Holly Rowe and our entire ESPN crew. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Kansas in overtime beats Texas by four. So long, everybody, from Oklahoma City.